Longing for Jerusalem Season 1 has been sponsored by Mr. and Mrs. Isaac and Tiffany Naxon in honor of the Finding Holiness podcast, Part 10. A famous story is told about Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Orbach, Zecher Tzadik Libracha, regarding Ayn Tova, a good eye. He was a master of positive traits. He had a student in his yeshiva, Kol Torah, named Rav Dinkel, who was moving to the Bayit Vagan neighborhood from a secular neighborhood. The rabbi came to Rav Shlomo all excited to inform him about the move the following day. Rav Shlomo Zalman blessed him and surprisingly then told him, We have to drink a lechaim for the move. Rav Dinkel was shocked, to say the least. The Kadol Ador, Rosh Yeshiva, every minute is so precious to him. He was going to come to his house to celebrate, even agree to put up the mezuzah, and to drink a lechaim? Seemed kind of odd. He scheduled the visit for 4 p.m. As you can imagine, the family was ecstatic for the Rav's, Rav's visit. They laid out the table laden with goodies, cakes, beautiful wine. The rabbi entered the house precisely at 4 p.m. First thing he said, I'd like to look at the kitchen. He went into the kitchen and complimented everything he saw. The new appliances, the floors, the table in the corner, the chairs. He even went to the balcony and admired the view. He entered the rooms, inspected them carefully like he was doing bedikat chametz. Everything he saw in the room he praised, the shutters, the wall color, also the views. What was going on here? Finally, they sat in the living room to have their lechaim. Rav Dinkel asked, Tell me, Kvodar Rav, why is the Rav, who is normally so meticulous about time, need to see around my home? What did you expect to find? Rav Shlomo responded, Don't you know? We Yerushalmim are worried about Ein Hara, not like the Litvish Jews who don't pay much attention to it. And if the Yerushalmi men are worried about it, imagine the ladies who are really scared of Ein Hara. They want to hide everything from plain sight so that people shouldn't know or see. So if a person comes and sees what his friends has and is jealous, that Ayn Hara is very potent and can sometimes cause damage, chas v'shalom. And if Ayn Hara is so damaging and problematic, imagine how powerful the Ayn Tova is to influence the good. The good outweighs the bad 500 times in Hashem's eyes. I went around your house to instill Ayn Tova in the kitchen, the balcony, every single bedroom, so that you should only see bracha. Now you will see that only good will come out of your house. Rabotai, we need to strengthen ourselves in Ayn Tova and Ahavat Chinam, a good eye, and loving, loving every Jew. These are the things that will help rebuild the Bet Hamidash, since they directly contrast the ideals that got it destroyed. The Vilna Gaon would tell all of his students that instead of bringing pain through fasting and infliction, work on your speech. Elohai Netzor Leshoni Mera. We don't have a prayer to ask Hashem, please prevent my mouth from eating treif or milk and meat. We practice eating kosher. We refrain from eating non-kosher foods. But we don't have a prayer for it. But Lashon Hara, Ayn Hara, is so prevalent. A prayer needs to be instituted to help us combat it. May it be God's will. We merit to protect our mouths, the place the baseless hatred stems from. So it will be replaced with only love and Ayn Tova. And with that, We'll be Zohe to the redemption. Bimrabi Amenu. Amen. Thank you for listening.